Armando, 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 Diego Armando, Dona, Diego Armando Maradona. So I went ahead and I watched the um, Diego Maradona documentary that is out right now in cinemas. And, you know, even before coming into watching this documentary, there's always been the debate about who is the greatest player of all time. And in my view, I've always felt that the greatest for me, taking everything into account, it was really a debate between... Do you say Messi or do you say Pele? This, sorry, do, do you say Pele or do you say Maradona? <laughs> There's always been the two of the, of the greatest because based on what you've done internationally and what you've done club-wise. But even if it's been very tough between the whole Maradona and Pele thing, the one thing that I said that swings into Maradona's um, favour was what he did with Napoli. Because we all know about Pele's greatness in the World Cup. Three World Cups, technically two. And we all know about the um, what Maradona did in 1986 and how he took them to the final in 1990. But what I always zoned in was Napoli and how Napoli have only won two league titles. And the two league titles that they won was when Maradona was there. So that's why I said, you know, if you could give it to Maradona what he did. But I think what this documentary does, it, it illuminates and it's expounds upon it and dives in and really digs in beneath the fingernails of his Napoli time. And it's always very interesting because when I was watching it, I didn't know how much of the Maradona story was, was going to be told. As in, would they tell the story of him in Argentina, him in Boca Juniors, or would they, would they tell him the, the story of him in Barcelona? Would they tell more of him in Argentina, perhaps in the 1982 World, World Cup? Um, not really getting picked for the 78 one. So, so many different facets. Would they show him in 94 aftermath? So, I think what you saw in this was obviously they showed a bit of the Barcelona. They definitely touched upon the 1986 World, World, World Cup, but they focused in on his time at Napoli. That was the heart of the documentary. And it is so apt that they focused in on that. So, they did focus in on what he did in Argentina, him coming to the, the national team. They did. Focusing on um, him, you know, his drug issues and his weight issues afterwards. The focus, the bulk, the meat. 85% of the film, perhaps I'd even say 90% of the film, is his time at Napoli. And I think what was really good about this documentary, because the documentary wasn't perfect, I thought I could have done things better, but the most striking thing about this documentary was the amount of footage they had. Because remember, this was during Napoli and Naples, but the, man, the fact that they got the footage, um, such good behind-the-scenes footage, such intimate footage in the 80s, late 80s, I just thought it was amazing because it just gave you a very intimate look at Maradona. You know, him dancing, him at parties, him with his girlfriend, him in training. There was there was some very nice um, back and forth between him and his... Um, his, his personal trainer. But I think watching this film, and I think for those who watch the documentary, they'll, they'll definitely agree with me in this. This film should have been called Diego versus Maradona. That should have been the, the name of the film. I think Diego versus Maradona would have been the perfect title for this film because I think what the documentary showed was how it was it, that there are two people. There's Diego and there's Maradona. Diego is the guy that everyone likes. He's he's the nice... Not the one that everyone likes. Diego is, is the nice guy. He's the shy guy. He's the guy from the streets and the slums of um, Argentina. He's the mama's boy. Maradona is the one that everyone likes. Everyone loves. He's the drug taker, the drug user, the, the, the dancer, the exuberant one, the superstar, the aggressive one. So it was really a, a battle between those, those two ide ideologies. But I think what was very striking, you know, I'll get to the whole Napoli. What was very striking was... I think how Maradona was portrayed and how he saw himself. Because one thing was very interesting that was said in the film was how... Because obviously he grew up poor. Ridiculously poor. I think the place was Victoria fit, fit, or something like that. But they actually showed um, what it looked like and it was shacks. It was shacks. It's, it's, it's similar to the kind of slums that you would see in Nigeria where these are just like tin shacks. So this is like dead, dead poor. As, it just adds to the psychology of the man. And one thing that was very striking was how I think someone said, and I forgot who it was, how they said the journey of this um, African dirty black kid who became the superstar. It's very interesting of how 
people viewed him as black. You know, that was very striking. How people viewed him as like this black kid, this African kid. So I think it just shows you sort of the, it gives an instance of the racial and the social dynamics in Argentina at that time of how people saw people who looked like Maradona and lived where he lived. So basically, so him going to Naples, you have to understand about this, and I think this is what they alluded to, is that Naples was the poorest. So this at the time he moved, Naples was the poorest city in Europe. The poorest city in Europe. It was at the bottom of the bottom of the lowest, lowest of the, of the low. So the most striking thing was people say, how the hell would you afford it? You get like Maradona. Because Maradona was seen as this prodigy. Let's work out for him at Barcelona. But Napoli were able to buy him. And even at the press conference, when Maradona was revealed at the press conference, guys were like, wait a minute. How did he afford this dude? And that is where people then brought in this whole thing of the Camorra. And the Camorra were, of course, the mob who really ran things um, amongst Naples. So, again, we don't really know, but there was always that feeling that this was bankrolled by the Camorra. But it, it showed you what Maradona was had to deal with. Because when he came into Napoli, Napoli, there were a bunch of nobodies. So, but even through his inspiration, he able he to get them to at least eighth in, in the league. But what was striking was when Maradona was explaining how difficult that first season was in Italy, where it was tougher, it was much more physical, it was much more aggressive, and he realized that he had to tweak his game. He had to change his game. Because remember, he was a small, short dude who wasn't particularly strong, he wasn't big, and he wasn't fast. So he said that he, the technique he was developing, he had to make his technique um, quicker and faster. And this was perhaps one of the greatest sayings, I shall tweet this out, greatest sayings that he said. He said, football is about deceit. It's about fainting to go one way and making the defender go the other way. For me, that is the essence of football. Of course, there are many aspects of, you know, passing, goal scoring, tactics, marking, and everything. But for me, growing up, especially in Nigeria, the essence of football is that, is when I have the ball, how can I beat this man? How can I make this man think that I'm going to the right, but really I'm going to the left? How do I sell to this man that's trying to get the ball off me that he thinks I'm going to go to the right? How do I sell that I'm going to go to the right, but I go to the left? And I just think, for me, that is really the essence and the core of football. So it was so interesting and amazing that he was able to see that because that is similar to how I view the essence, you know, and the heart of football. Ball. But, so when he led Napoli to their first league championship, it was huge. It was massive. It was such a huge, big deal. Because, and also he did this just after um, he won the World Cup um, in 86. So um, when that was done, the president was like, no, 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 you have to, to, to stay here. But you see, the thing is that, you know, you, what she now saw in the film was like, Maradona, you don't understand how huge this guy was. He was God in Naples. And I'm not exaggerating because this was a, a town and a city that pretty much had nothing, everything. And people said, and this was, and someone even said this in the voiceover, that people looked forward more to every Sunday than what their kids was doing or what their wives were, were, were doing. For most people, the only thing they looked forward to was how Napoli would be doing on Sunday. That was the salvation for so many people at this time. So, he, you understand, he was such a big deal. Maradona was such a flipping big deal for Naples, for Napoli, and for everything in there. So, he wasn't allowed to leave. And I think by... He struggled with the startup. He couldn't go anywhere alone. He couldn't um, go to the restaurants alone. He couldn't go to the street alone. Everywhere he went, there were cameras, there were people trying to take pictures of him, and the attention was too much. So he was like, you know what? The only way I can survive through this, because I'm going through depression, I'm going through agitation because I can't leave, I was like, taking coke. So that's how he revolted to taking drug use, because again, this is something that happened to all celebrities, because it's very easy for people to point the finger and say, oh my gosh, look, you're, you're, you're a druggie, you're a drug, drug user. Most 99% of people in this world don't know what it means to be super famous. They don't. 99% of the people don't know what it means to be where you go to a shop and you're being handed every single time. Most of you, when you go to, to, to the shop, no one, no one gives a damn about you. 
people aren't, aren't stopping to get your autograph. 99.9% of the population, no one gives a damn about you when you step out in public. But for Maradona, it was a huge deal for him. It was a massive deal for him. He was super famous. And I think for that, losing that privacy, remember, this was a guy who came up from very, very mega, mega, mega um, upbringing from the death poor in Argentina. So the only way that he knew how to cope was, okay, let me just get on this high and on drug balls. So what was crazy was, so he'd get high on Monday, Tuesday. And from Wednesday till Sunday, he'd then have to decompose and, and break that all down. So I think it was maybe the, I think it was the 89 and 90 season. It might have been the 89 and 90 season or the 87 and 88 season. He literally led Napoli to a championship while essentially being high on, high on coke. You know, so he essentially led these guys to a championship whilst being flipping high on coke, which for me is just that's just that's just crazy. How you were still able to play in such a tough league at a top level while being high on coke earlier on in the week for me that doesn't make any sense. So when you just look at what he was able to do <laughs> um in Napoli in Naples, leading them to two league championships against the might of AC Milan and Juventus, I was like this is incredible. This is amazing because he was dealing with so much off the field because again, beyond the drug use, beyond the Camorra actually saying to him, look man, we'll protect you, you're a guy, we'll do everything for you, and pretty much having to do things for the Camorra based on his drug addiction due to the stresses of um, being so famous. He had the whole issue with, you know, his baby mama, really. You know, he had his, his, his girlfriend where they had a, a, a kid, but he also had a kid with a, another girlfriend who he denied that that was his kid based on all complications of not trying to really upset his current girlfriend. And so they were just, he was just dealing with so much, psychologically and mentally. And this just shows you, and remember, how many people have we seen being broken by celebrity who based on the ridiculousness of fame have not been able to cope. I remember caught Coco Cobain. Caught Coco Cobain. You know, it's 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 eventually got to him. Like Coco Cobain was like, I cannot deal with this amount of pressure. There's no amount of drugs or anything that I can take that can deal with the ridiculous expectation I have of this generation of of, of youth. And for Maradona, it's like I cannot. This expectation and this um, adulation and this attention I'm receiving from an entire city. It's too much just for one month to, to take. So um, I thought that in itself was crazy. And, and even when you look at um, going back to that 1986 World Cup, um, and again, people, you know, they allude to the whole thing of the hand of God and, he, and his amazing solo goal against England, one of the greatest goals of all time. But when you look at even the hand of God, I've, I've never felt an issue with that. Because again, that just shows you the man and his desire to win on one hand you can view it as cheating and on the other hand you can view it as i am going to try and do everything within my power to try and get my country to win that's the thing so you can call it cheating or you can call it conning you know trying to be clever but because Madden was like i am going to do everything in my power everything within my power Whatever deceit is needed to try and lead my country all the way to win. And if, obviously, if you're English or anything, of course you'd be pissed off. But if you're Argentine, that's a hero. That is a hero. Said so This guy is really willing to go way and beyond, break any rules, just to try and get his country that to win. So, and even when he looks at the final uh, that Argentina had, of course, against West Germany, and when it became 2-2, I think Maradona was just saying to himself that how... At two two, everyone was tired, everyone was fatigued, and he said that during this time, at a critical moment, that is when your the number ten has to rise. That's when your number ten has to try and make something happen. And again, in that game, Maradona was the one that played that beautiful side splitting pass to what he knew was a tad to defense that led to, of course, the the the, the winning goal and Argentina going all the way through. So, I think looking at the documentary as a whole, I think I would have liked to see more of the aftermath they do go into the aftermath of course you know when he had this that documentary when he was crying based on him um obviously um having going over overweight and so forth but i'd have liked to see more of him in argentina more of his life in argentina interviews with more people 
um, than him growing up. So I think there should have been a more clear, concise beginning of who he was in Argentina as a poor boy and what he, the surroundings were like there. And I would have liked to have seen more of the aftermath, especially when he got taken away um, for drug use during the 94 war. I'd have liked to have seen that as well. But I think these are all little nit nitpicks and everything. Not everything is per perfect. So I think um, if you're a football fan, you have to watch this. Because as a football fan, you just, you see, you, you get an insight into a footballer's mind. Um, and also gets an insight into um, the difficulty of the of the sport and what and what it can take out of you both physically and emotionally. And so, just even coming away from it, I just say like, no, he is the greatest because of because he's the greatest because of his of his imperfections. That's the thing. His imperfections make him great because regular people can't connect to perfection. They can't. A guy who does all the right things, smiles all the time, everything is is, is great. He's a, he's a poster boy. Regular people can't compare to that. Regular people can compare to people who have fallen, gone down, but have still risen through. People can connect to people um, who rise above adversity. They can connect with people who are able to still achieve success through a high degree of difficulty. That is what we can connect with, and that is what Maradona did. So, if I was to rank this documentary, I would put this in tier two I'd, 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 I'd give this a tier two um um rank i think it's full shots of upper tier two because i think that they, they could have added a bit more myth and beat to the story both in the beginning and 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 towards the end of his career but i think there is so much amazing footage there's so much great intimate footage it is done so well so real and i think the way they told the the, the story of maradona the man um, the stuff around it, the way that they told the story of Naples, the Camorra, the, the mob, the mafia around him and what it was like. The way that they told the story of his relationship between Napoli, the fans, the president, the relationship between him and his family, him and the Argentina squad and the 1986 World Cup. I think all those things together make this um, a must watch and give it a tier two.